Okay, then let's look at some of the possible applications for the ceramic metric composite materials. So if you remember, I mentioned you that uh, for some particular applications, the only possible option would be ceramic materials, uh, mainly due to the, the elevated temperatures. So we know that ceramic materials are quite good at high temperature conditions. So therefore, uh, for some applications like uh, the hot section in gas turbines, in afterburners, and so on. So we might use the ceramic metric composites in particular, as we cannot use polymers and metals. And also with ceramic metric composites, we might be able to go into even higher temperatures than with the, the pure ceramic materials. So therefore we can achieve some extra benefits uh, by manufacturing ceramic metric composites. Okay, so let's look at some of the, the main applications that the CMCs are being used uh, over the past few years. So some applications quickly go through about why we talk about the CMCs. The main thing is the temperature. So why we need uh, the ceramic metric composites we are looking for uh, in applications where high temperature involvement like gas turbines, steam turbines and so on. But several properties you can compare di between different uh, the type of systems we call uh, the matrix uh, the, or the uh, CMC systems carbon carbon or maybe uh, reinforced with continuous fibers or discontinuous fibers and uh, you could see discontinuous uh, the composites are not great in uh, strength compared to con uh, the continuous fibers as you can expect okay and so this is for you to read and then uh, it's quite common thing we can have uh, the fracture toughness increments with CMCs right uh, the one of the main things if you look at these diagrams carefully uh, you can see the strength and the temperature for the CMCs. So uh, some of the alloys, aluminium, titanium, you can see we can't work with them uh, in elevated or high temperatures here. So but so ceramic metric composites, although they might not have the strength as we had before uh, with few alloys, so then but we can work with them at high temperatures with a reasonable uh, the strength. Okay, that is one of the main things that we are looking for uh, with the ceramic matrix composites. So why high temperature, why it is good for applications? So that is one of the things maybe we would, we would like to look at. So Okay, then here it is good to understand why these high temperatures are desirable in some particular applications. In particular, in the, the aerospace industry or in relating to the gas turbines or steam turbines, uh, the, the high operating temperatures are desirable to improve the, the thermodynamic efficiency of the engines. Okay, so let's try to identify why these high temperatures are important for this type of gas turbine engines and so on. Uh, here you can see two important, uh, the diagrams of characteristics that we are normally using to explain the operation of a gas turbine engine actually. So we call it the Brayton cycle for gas turbines. Here you can see the, the pressure volume diagram for the Brayton cycle and also this, the, uh, the temperature entropy diagram. So here, the Brayton cycle is a thermodynamic cycle that uh, gas turbines are based on. Okay, so if you can improve the, the cycle efficiency, so that means we can improve the, uh, the thermodynamic efficiency of a gas turbine. Okay, then if you consider an aircraft, so we can discuss about the thermodynamic efficiency of the engine and also the mechanical efficiency of the engine as well. So, but here, now we are looking at the thermodynamic efficiency by improving the temperature actually. So here you could see that this PV diagram, so if you have done some thermodynamics uh, at your previous studies, you might understand that the area enclosed by this, uh, the, the, uh, the curve here, or this, uh, the, uh, the quadrilateral shape, or this Brayton cycle, uh, the area inside this line uh, should be equal to the, the useful work done actually or the useful work done by the, the gas turbine actually. So then the area underneath this curve here, so this region is related to the, uh, the energy loss. Okay, so however here, the most important thing is the, the operating temperature range of the gas turbine engine. So if you know about a gas turbine engine, maybe I explained you before. So it has four main sections, the intake, and then we have the, the, uh, the compressor and then combustion chamber and then the exhaust. Okay, so then the compressor might have several stages at the, and at the same time, turbine might also have several stages. So it, within the compressor, so then we try to uh, the compress the gas uh, the while increasing the temperature up to some certain level. And as the gases are passing through the turbine blades, so then uh, the turbine blades can uh, the rotate by extracting the energy carried by the high temperature, high velocity gases. Okay, so that is the idea. So then here the idea is that if we can increase the working temperature range of the cycle, 
Okay, so uh, the, then we can extract more energy. For simply, if you can explain the enclosed area by this diagram, so then we can increase the useful work output. Okay, for that, how we can do that here now? So here you can indicate that. So this is the, the intake air temperature to the gas turbine. So uh, the one to two is indicating the, the compressor process. We are compressing the air actually. Okay, and then, so here three to four is the, the expansion of the gas to the turbine actually. Uh, the, somehow, if we can just increase the temperature range, this three to four temperature range, so then gases can expand at a high temperature range. So that means actually, so uh, the, uh, then we can increase uh, the area covered by this, uh, the diagram actually. So that means we can increase the work done. So, but what is the problem here is that if you want to increase the temperature, so then it's a problem that whether the gas turbine blade material can withstand that type of high temperatures. So therefore we have some limitations of increasing temperature. So with a high performance ceramic metric composite, so then we might be able to push the limits of the operating temperatures of a gas turbine uh, up to some certain high level. So then by doing so, we can expand the area within this curve. So that means we can expand the useful work done. Okay, there are several other things to be considered here actually, so we can't expand the temperature uh, the simply, so there are several other things to be considered. Okay, so then hope you understand now somehow if you can expand this uh, the area enclosed by this diagram, so simply then expanding the operating temperature range of the gas turbine, we can improve the thermodynamic efficiency of the cycle. And so, so this is the story for a gas turbine engine. So then uh, the, uh, for a, a steam turbine also, we have a similar type of cycle, but we call it uh, the ranking cycle. So the ranking cycle will also have this type of uh, the, the PV and TS diagram. So then we can indicate them, but uh, the uh, story relating to the uh, ranking cycle is slightly different because the operating uh, fluid is the steam. So steam can condense into uh, the, the moisture or to some water. So then normally the turbines, uh, it does not like to have water within it, so then it could create some problems. So therefore, by just uh, the, uh, adhering to these limitations, if we can just improve the working temperature range for a gas turbine or a steam turbine, so we can just increase the useful work done. So by doing so, we can improve the efficiency, I mean the thermodynamic efficiency of an engine. So that is why, so we would like to have some high temperatures uh, in these, uh, the applications like the gas turbines and steam turbines. I, so here I'm not going to provide you basic thermodynamic uh, the explanation, but so just to give you some rough idea, so why uh, the high temperatures are desirable. So, but again, you have to understand that there are a number of several other constraints that we have to consider before we increase in uh, the area enclosed by this diagram. So that means before increasing the temperature range uh, of a gas turbine engine or a steam turbine engine. Okay, so, but uh, with uh, the high performance materials, so we can achieve these properties and we can see whether uh, what is the maximum possible uh, the thermodynamic efficiency that we can go for. So by doing so, we can increase the, the, uh, the uh, pool efficiency uh, and oh, otherwise we could say we can travel further uh, with the same amount of fuel or we can carry more passengers, uh, then we can cut down the carbon footprint. Okay, hope it is clear. So most of the, the uh, ceramic metric composites are good in uh, working at high elevated temperature with desired properties. Okay, right. Uh, so, increased power power and then reduced fuel consumption mean. So then we can have uh, we can calculate because we can work at high temperatures. We can increase the useful work output to a given energy input. So then fuel consumption goes up and then uh, also reduction in emissions as well. Right, and the uh, this is a nice video if you would like to uh, watch here. Uh, the some people they're trying to replace uh, the super alloys from uh, these uh, turbine blades and also in these shafts. So uh, the main important factor here. So if you replace super alloys with CMC uh, materials, the density or the weight is you know if you're trying to replace some uh, the super alloy shaft, uh, the replacement of CMC would be one third of the weight. So then two thirds of the weight is going to be reduced. Okay, so it's a huge weight reduction, but we can get the same functionality of the properties. Okay, so then uh, the one third of the super alloy is density or the weight for the CMCs. So uh, the, they, they are trying to uh, replace more, most of these uh, the super alloys with uh, CMCs. Uh, 
It's an interesting video. If you, I, I have just provided uh, the links for all the videos if you would like to look. This, uh, I'm not going to discuss all of this. This is some, uh, something you can read later. Okay. So this is afterburner in uh, the uh, supersonic aircraft, mostly in the military uh, the fighter jets. The afterburner is uh, just to uh, uh, increase the thrust. But okay, why it is I'm showing here, you can see uh, the ceramic uh, matrix composites and application here. So the temperature could go up to 1,500 or above here. So this is not in uh, the passenger aircraft, but uh, to uh, increase the, to get the thrust in takeoff and also in comeback situations, the afterburner is useful. And then they use some CNC materials in here because of the high temperature. Okay. So the, if you are interested in, you can read. I'm just only pointing out some applications. And then uh, again in this special space, uh, the shuttles. Uh, the elevated temperatures, uh, the CMCs are used heavily because uh, this uh, ability in working high temperatures and also uh, the, the weight reduction. Right, uh, again some of the uh, high temperature applications, the bearings. So in the bearings, one of the main problems right now we have is the friction. So but with the CMCs, the good thing is, uh, so you can have reduced friction half of the uh, the half of what we have with the mostly with metals or the conventional techniques okay so therefore wear resistance is going to be reduced and also friction is going to be reduced at the same time we'll have a longer lifetime so these things uh, the you can read and then these are some examples but the the main thing you have to remember the production cost you have to pay uh, and also the commercial value is going to be really high if you want to get these things. For example, if you have a car, maybe you're going to look at, so we can have super alloy brake disc, so then you have to pay for it uh, extra value. So uh, the, again, uh, the, they are replacing some uh, metal uh, components in uh, burners, flame holders, and these kind of things. Uh, but the problem here, if you just ma try to manufacture these with metals, it's really easy process. But for the ceramic mazes, you have to uh, have a dedicated a person who is doing mostly manually right now. So I mean you have to manufacture component by component. You have to lay this, uh, the uh, reinforcement and then wet it with the spray up or something like that. So it's a time consuming process. We have better properties, but the one of the main problems why we can't replace it, the high cost and also uh, the very slow production times. Okay, so something like, so replacing this with uh, the CMCs is quite good. Uh, maybe more than double the lifetime, but it's a really slow process. Someone has to do it uh, manually, mostly, uh, properly uh, mixing the, the uh, matrix and reinforcement. Exhaust systems, again, uh, these are just mostly, uh, some of these are done in Germany, and they're testing this, but again, uh, not in mass production. Okay, so uh, you can see these are, this is, this is going to be here. Okay, normally in the, in the aircraft, but so this is the largest uh, the oxide CMC part ever made, and again this is from uh, the source. You can see it's a good story if you would like to read, and uh, but uh, you could have very good properties, low lower weight, but uh, this not uh, mass production scale yet, so therefore it's a problem. Right, the brakes. Uh, if you the CMCs again, I just uh, the show you some steps how to get uh, the CMC uh, the brake systems. You can have uh, the good performance, and uh, the one of the main thing is uh, the brake is squeal. Or you know what is what it is. Maybe if you if you drive the car, you will see sometimes in the slow speeds you will get the noise from the wheels. Okay, so that is a big problem, but maybe we don't bother about it. Yeah, but it is a very big pro the, uh, the problem for the research community. They're trying to minimize it. To minimize the brake squeal, uh, S-Q-U-E-L, so then it is because of the problem with the brake system. So then uh, we can reduce the brake squeal with uh, these, uh, the new technologies, with CMCs, and also a good brake performance, and then longer lifetime. And, uh, but especially in the, these uh, the high speed cars like ra formula racing cars, uh, the definitely you can't use these normal uh, cast iron brake pads 
the reason why it is really high speed and also the temperature generation during the, the break-in is really high. You have very sudden break-in as well. So therefore, we have to have some materials which can work in elevated temperatures. So therefore, CMCs are uh, really important and you, they, are, they are using uh, these. Okay, and so I hope uh, the rest is I would like you to just read through this. I don't want to read you, to read you now. So then you can, it is for you to read later some of these stories. Okay, so that's all I want to discuss on uh, the CMCs.